Hello, listeners. Welcome to Marie Lives the Horror. This is episode 8 of the series of True Paranormal Ghost Stories. In this episode, I bring you six haunting tales of true ghost stories. So without further ado, step Step into into my my horror horror chamber chamber as as we we live live the horror horror together. together. Number one, the horn. Tim Horley was a high school senior who just graduated. One evening after too much drinking, Tim and two of his friends hit a tree head on, killing him and his two friends. My town is small. Tim had many friends and grieving parents. It affected everyone in the town. Summer turned into fall, and the stories started coming in. The gist of the stories was as follows. We heard it last night. A car horn. Right out in front of the tree where Tim was killed. It was as clear as a bell and not another car in sight. The people that I'd always hear talking about this were older than me. They had either graduated with Tim or were slightly older. They were all driving and I was barely 13. Due to the location of the wreck, I never saw the death scene on a regular basis. The only time I'd been there was with my folks immediately after the accident when they rode out by to see where it had happened. As the years passed, the story of the Phantom Horn, or as some now called it, the Horley Horn, was no longer a topic of conversation. It also took on an almost legendary status due to the people that had first experienced the sound either moved away or matured to where their hangouts were now at home or a restaurant. It was now five years later and I was almost 18 and had been driving for two years. It was me who was now a senior as Tim had been. The large oak tree that Tim had crashed into had long been removed and was replaced with a four miles to Turner's Park state sign. I'd been to a party at a friend's house on Route 20 and departed around 12.30 a.m. The Route 20 wound for about four miles until coming out onto main Route 452 North. As I approached the main route intersection, I heard what initially was a faint but definitive sound, a car horn. I slowed and rolled down the window halfway. The main 452 was a long two-way ribbon of road that trucks utilized heavily. But the section where I was pulling out gave me a long extended view in both directions. There was nothing for over one mile north or south. I continued to hear the horn, which had now increased, not in volume, but in presence. Two things stuck out. The horn sounded close, but with a distant report. I couldn't acquire a direction or distance. The second thing was that it now had the sound of a horn being powered by a weak or draining battery. I went ahead and made a left onto the main highway depending on my eyes instead of ears. Once I pulled out onto 452, the sound stopped abruptly. It wasn't until I gotten a quarter mile down the road that I realized where I was. Route 20 had dumped me out 
in the exact location of where Tim was killed. I hadn't thought of the phantom horn story for years, and suddenly the whole thing came rushing back into my head. I turned on my dome light and left it on the entire trip home. That was many years ago. Did it affect me? Profoundly. It's the highest level of fear I've experienced. Heart pounding even after getting home. So unexpected. It was out of the way deep in my mind as a spooky story I'd heard as a kid in a well-lit Dairy Queens with lots of people around. In hindsight, the terror was in the delay. What I mean is that, while hearing it occur, the thought of Tim, the accident, and the stories never came to my mind, only after the fact. I've never been able to reconcile that, and to this day, whenever I go back home, I do not use that stretch of road. I never will, alone or not. Number 2. The Devil's Tramping Ground This is the story about how three U.S. Marines were scared shitless within only a few hours, including myself. I have a friend who is really into the paranormal, just like me. Let's call him Jake. It was October 2018 and we just wanted to go ghost hunting or explore supposedly haunted buildings slash areas. We have been researching and decided our drive limit was up to four hours. I came across a place called the Devil's Tramping Ground. At the place, there is a circle in the woods that cannot grow grass and the trees make a circle around it. As legend has it, the devil himself uses that circle of sand and dirt as a portal. He comes to earth at night and stomps on the ground, pacing back and forth. We read that if you try to sleep there on the circle, you will hear a soothing female singing which will put you to sleep, and then you will wake up in a different location. So what did we do? We brought tents, sleeping bags, chairs, and beer, of course. Me and Jake were planning our trip, and another one of my buddies caught wind of it. Let's call him Nick. We were all set to go on Friday when we got out of work. We left base at around 4 p.m., but didn't actually hit the road until roughly 8 p.m. because we kept getting sidetracked at different stores. I'll skip right to the good part. We get off the highway. It's close to midnight. We have our GPS on, and it wants us to go down the only damn road with no streetlights, of course. We start driving down that narrow dark road slowly, so we can find the clearing for the devil's tramping ground. We read that there would be satanic symbols in front of the clearing, written on the road. We had our eyes peeled. There was something odd about this road. I shit you not, we were being chased the entire way by about ten dogs and one black dog. Every dog was barking, except for that black dog, and he kept appearing in the woods to the left of us and in front of us as we were driving, as if he was trying to turn us around. We found the symbols and knew it was it. The dogs hadn't followed us that far. We parked and got out with flashlights, first to scope out the area. I'm not gonna lie. It was extremely unsettling. 
We made our way up to the circle and thought, perfect, let's go get our stuff. Fast forward about an hour, and it's quiet. We have our tents set up on the circle, with our chairs set up surrounding our cooler. We were just telling ghost stories and drinking. Nothing really seemed to bother us, other than the occasional twig snapping that sounded like footsteps, and the feeling of being watched. We just chalked it up to the animals. It's 2 a.m. now. I start to hear voices all around me, and I'm not the only one. Nick and Jake heard it too. It felt like we were about to be jumped by a group of men surrounding us, but we knew whatever it was, wasn't human. The voices stopped, and I kid you not, at the same time, the car headlights turned on. We went to the car to find all of the doors open. Unnerved, we slowly closed all the doors and went back to drinking. 2.30 a.m. We are all on edge. Not even drunk at this point because of the events that just took place. Everyone was silent. I can hear and feel my heart beating out of my chest. You'll never believe it. We all heard beautiful humming coming from every direction. I wish I could describe how it sounded, but we knew this sound was not good. We all leaned in closer together as the singing was going on. Without one word spoken, we all got up went to the car and got out of there. We then visited Lydia's bridge because it was nearby, and it is said that Lydia walks the road on the bridge at night. We didn't see anything, so we slept in a nearby Walmart parking lot in the car, and then we went back the next morning to get our things out of the circle. Number three, different kinds of hauntings. I am on a mobile device, so please forgive the way this looks. Also, this is my recounting of the experiences I've had in both of my homes. So this is quite long. I have only lived in two houses in my life but both have been haunted. To preface this, I want to say I am not influenced by scary movies, since I avoid them like the plague. I am a fraidy cat, always have been, so I don't need spooky movies making me terrified. I'll start with the house I lived in from the time I was born until I was 19. This house had three bedrooms, a super creepy basement and just always seemed dark. The experiences started with my brother, who is four years older than me. As a child, he often would see a soldier marching towards him wherever he was on the property. It terrified him for a long time before my very religious dad did something, and that particular activity stopped. Although, this did not stop my brother from having horrible night terrors for a long time. He would scream and cry, but couldn't be woken up. Skipping ahead to my own experiences, I will start with the most frequent one. I shared a room with my sister until I was 12. She was 14. Naturally, we didn't get along great, but respected each other's space. She made me sleep in the bed by our door, so I had a view out into the hallway. We always kept our door mostly closed at night, but with a crack open to let our cat in to sleep wherever she wanted. I never told my sister because I didn't want to scare her, 
but like clockwork, from the time I was about eight, I would wake up in the middle of the night and see a man looking into our bedroom at me. He always stayed half hidden behind our door, but would just stand there staring at me. I tried to explain it away as my dad checking in on us, but since we shared a vent with my parents' room, I could easily hear him snoring while this man watched us. Time passed and after my parents divorced, I didn't notice this activity again. I had pretty much pushed it to the back of my mind, when at 16, my sister's boyfriend at the time spent the night in our creepy basement. There was a bedroom down there, though no door on it, since it was rarely used. He ended up staying late at our house, so was offered that room to sleep in. The next morning he seemed disturbed, so I asked him what was wrong, and he kinda tried shrugging it off and saying it was nothing. I insisted he tell me, and when he finally did, I was horrified. All night there had been a man peeking at him from behind our water heater that sat at the far end of the basement across from the bedroom. I confided with him and my sister about what I'd seen for the years her and I shared a room, and we all agreed it was super creepy. A couple of years later, my sister and brother told me that sometimes in the middle of the night, they'd wake up to me muttering, sitting up straight in bed. They'd try to get me to stop playing annoyed older siblings while actually being freaked out since my eyes were always closed, though apparently they never could make me stop or wake up. I would eventually snap my head in whatever direction they were in, and in their words, growl at them to get out. I have never been afraid walking in the dark in any house other than that one. It's unnerving, but not terrifying in any way. But turning off the lights and going up the very dark stairs to my room always felt a bit scarier. There was one night in particular that stands out. I had walked down those dark stairs without a problem, but when it came time to walk back up, I went cold with dread. I was staring at the dark space of the landing, and I just knew something was there. The house was old and, of course, there were spots that creaked when you stepped on them. But that landing never made phantom creaking sounds unless someone was on it. So when I heard it creak as if someone was adjusting their weight, I turned on every light I could, not caring if I woke up my dad, and for the first time in three years, I prayed. What convinced me this event was paranormal in nature is that I have never been struck motionless with fear before. The stairs in particular unnerved me, but not so much that I felt in danger just being near them. Besides that, lights have randomly come on, the most notable being the one on a dimmer switch. I couldn't put anything on my walls because it would always fall off, and things constantly went missing only to turn up right when I got annoyed when I couldn't find them. For the most part, the experiences in that house were more annoying, but they could suddenly take a sinister and terrifying turn at any given moment. That house seemed to bring you down, leave you depressed and angry. Whatever was in that house was all wrong. Now, on to the experiences in my new home. I moved halfway across the country with my boyfriend into a small three-bedroom house. 
It's a comfy place, and I instantly felt more comfortable in than my previous home. At first, nothing happened. Then one day, I was alone in our bedroom when plain as day. It looked like someone lifted my kitten and gently placed her on the bed next to me. At the time, the bed was in a corner against the wall. I was sitting up in that corner of the bed against the wall, reading, when I looked up and saw her back arched, and her feet slightly above the mattress as she freaking glided over to me. It freaked me out. I couldn't rationalize this, so I just picked her up and went downstairs where my boyfriend was playing video games. One day, when I was in my backyard, I saw a light left on in the small bedroom that has become my office. I knew I'd turn it off, but the door is always closed, so my cats don't knock anything fragile over. I decided to go in and turn it off, leaving my boyfriend outside, only to walk upstairs and see the door wide open and the light now off. I closed the door, made sure it wouldn't open, and then went back outside and didn't say anything. Suddenly, that particular door opening became a regular thing until one day I walked in there and decided to try asking it to stop. I just said, can you keep this door closed, please? It's so the cats don't break anything. After that, the door stopped turning up open. My boyfriend is in the army, so naturally he spent some time away from home. On one such night, I was sleeping when at about 2 in the morning, I heard a smash. Now this is the day I realized that I am fearless when I'm still sleepy. I grumbled down those stairs pissed to be woken up and peeked into my kitchen angry at the cat for knocking things off the counter. I didn't see anything at first, but once I stepped into the kitchen, I stepped directly onto the broken glass. Thankfully, I didn't cut myself, so I just cleaned it up and went back to bed. It wasn't until the next morning that I realized One, the glass was in the center of the kitchen, and two, it was all piled into one place, every last shard. It was like it had already been swept into that space. I scoured the kitchen looking for any more glass and didn't find any. The last bigger experience I had was when I fell asleep on the little futon in my office. I was relaxing in there and reading late one night and fell asleep when suddenly I woke up. I wasn't scared, just felt like I was in the way or being annoying. Like after midnight, I should go be in my own room. I had to wonder if maybe that room was claimed by whomever or whatever is in my house. Like they're okay if I use it, but when it's bedtime, I should just go and be in my own bed. I do not think the presence in this house is malicious. Rather, I find it very helpful at times. When my cats are getting into something they shouldn't be in, I've seen them get pushed away, like someone is using their foot to get them away from whatever they shouldn't be messing with. They seem to help the cats too. I know the cats have gotten stuck in the bathroom, accidentally being closed in, and I'll hear a small knocking sound on whatever room I'm in until I go let the cat out. This at first unsettled me, but now it's just very helpful and nice. Sometimes I also get a very strong feeling to check our door before bed And every single time I get that feeling, the door is unlocked. 
I like my doors locked at night. So this has been very helpful. So to conclude, I have experienced two very different types of hauntings now. And frankly, I prefer the one I'm dealing with now. Number four, my mother's office. I have plenty of stories, but here's one of the first encounters I ever had. I used to go and hang out with my mother at work, sometimes when I was younger, just to spend some time with her in the summer. One day, her boss was not in his office, and he had a couch in it. So she set me up in there with my portable DVD player. This was around 14 years ago. Once I settled in, I was lying on my back with the door behind me and the DVD player was on my stomach. As I was lying there, I heard the door to the office open and saw out of the corner of my eye a man walk in. My mother works for the Department of Justice, so it didn't seem too weird that he was wearing a nice suit. However, he also had a top hat on. I know everyone on her floor, but I had never seen this man before. I tried not to make eye contact as I was watching, but I watched this man go through my mother's boss's desk looking for something. He was scattering sheets, shuffling through the drawers and making a mess. After doing that for 30 to 45 seconds, he got up and left. Right when he left, I ran down the hall to my mother's office and told her what had happened. She came back and saw everything scattered across his desk and went across the hall to her friend's office. When asked who came into the office, her friend said, no one has been in or out of there besides you. All day. I never went back in there. It is also important to note that my mom is the first one in the office every day, and every morning when she goes in, she unlocks his door and turns on the lamp. But when she goes back a little bit later, the door will be locked and the light will be turned off. Number 5. Paranormal Experience in the Welsh Valleys Okay, so I live in the Southern Wales Valleys, stretching from Eastern Carmarthenshire to Western Mammothenshire, inside the West Glamorgan area. Just to give you the range of the area where this event happened. This was a group of me and four friends, all average built guys, fast runners and strangely good climbers and free runners. I'll call friend one Ace, friend two McShane and friend three Jones. It was somewhere during the summer of 2018 and we walked for about three hours to a large hill and back down the other side just to go for a walk because we got bored of our local village. We stumbled across this old, ruined and abandoned farmhouse with an old brick stable. The design looked to be pre-World War I. I included a picture link below, which is not the same house we visited, but just a picture off Google that looks similar to what we found. Now, I and Ace thought it would be a good idea to go explore this place. So we all jumped the gate and went inside because the door was missing. There was a first floor, second floor, basement, and attic put into the roof. We were looking around at all the broken furniture and rotted walls, 
etc. Until we heard a loud crash on the second floor. Me, Ace, and Jones wouldn't go up because we were shitting bricks. So McShane decided to go up on his own. He found what was previously a neatly stacked pile of old chairs had somehow flung everywhere and broken apart and then he called us up to have a look. Now, at the time we thought nothing of it, but now that I think about it, the chairs couldn't have fallen over in such a way because they were in every part of the room. So cut forward a bit. We were now just chilling out until we heard a sort of clapping noise, but not like the traditional clapping noise. It sounded distorted, as if someone was on a broken record player. It just repeated over and over again, straight away without fail, for about three to four seconds. It was coming from the barnyard. We rushed to have a look having the courage to do so, because the barn was a completely open place. All we found was broken bricks, and then we heard the same noise coming from the house. McShane and Jones checked it out, while me and Ace stayed in the barnyard, just in case it happened here. At the time, we hadn't a clue what it was, but being cocky, we thought we could overpower anything. McShane and Jones claim when they went in the house, the shares were neatly stacked again. So at this point, we booked it because we didn't stack those chairs. We jumped the fence and legged it. I know this story is incredibly cliche and unoriginal, but it's what I experienced and it scares me shitless. If anyone has an explanation or anything for what me and my friends went through, that would be great. Number six, a visitor to my cabin in the woods. I live in rural Appalachia and I adore the wilderness. I often invite friends to come out and camp with me. One, because I enjoy sharing the wilderness with people close to me and two, because there's a creature that lives in my woods, as mentioned in a previous post. A couple of years ago, maybe four or five, my aunt bought a small cabin from the Amish and placed it there. She intended it to be used as a playhouse for my younger cousins, but my cousins never enjoyed it and could never stay a full night there. The weekend off of school came, and I called out to my friend to see if he'd like to stay in the woods for the weekend. He agreed and had his mom bring him out. We started walking and made it not even halfway to our destination when he asked if we could just stay in the new cabin for a night or two because the weather said it was going to storm anyways. We walked back to the top of the hill so I could text my aunt, and she gave me the okay. It was starting to get dark, so we went ahead and settled down completely in the cabin and started eating where we're supposed to be camping rations. We talked and talked for hours until we looked out the window and noticed it was dark out and the rain was coming down. We decided it was best to lay down and go to sleep. So he passed out almost instantly, leaving me alone in pitch black darkness listening to the sound of heavy rain hitting the tin roof. I didn't even realize I fell asleep until I heard loud knocking and rattling on the door, and I figured my buddy went out to pee or something. The door 
had a large window, and I could clearly see someone standing there. I was dreading having to crawl out of the blankets into the slightly moist, cold, still air room to let him in after he somehow locked himself out. So I rolled over to prepare to stand up, and as I was doing this, I faced his bed, which I couldn't make out the shape 100%, but as I focused my eyes more, I could see he was still in it. I froze and was in pure terror for what seemed like at least an hour. I hear the thing at the door make a sound akin to clearing its throat and it runs into the woods. I wait at least 20 minutes before asking if my friend was awake and he immediately said yeah. Did you see and hear that thing too? I asked. Yes, he said. Were you awake when it was whispering? No, I said. We laid there too scared to move or make a sound above a whisper for hours. I would start drifting off and almost immediately start hearing something tap on the windows, but I would try my best to ignore it, even when I could clearly hear something rubbing its fingers on the edge of the tin roof on my side of the cabin. Morning came and I felt like death. My buddy didn't feel as bad and apparently thought the figure was a dream, but he quickly realized it wasn't with the more details I brought up. We packed up and started to make our way back to my house. Halfway up the hill to my house, I realized the scariest part of everything the night had to offer. We never locked the door. The rest of the way up my hill was spent with me constantly looking over my shoulder down at that cabin. To this day, I haven't spent another night in it, or give it a glance longer than two seconds on my way to the woods. If you have any questions about any part of my story, feel free to ask. Although this happened years ago, I still remember most of it pretty well. Hello listeners, thanks for listening to this episode of True Paranormal Ghost Stories as you live the horror with me. If you would like to submit some of your own true paranormal experiences for me to narrate on this channel, check the description down below and send them over to my email. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to keep up with future episodes. Thanks for listening. I am your host, Marie Lives the Horror.